morning children i am vishalakshi and i am here to teach you geography in the 10th standard we have a 40 marks paper and 10 marks are assigned for your mcqs and assignments you've got nine lessons in the 10th standard always the first lesson is field visit and the subsequent lessons from the second to the ninth you are going to have a comparative study of india and brazil you might be wondering why brazil was chosen it is because both these countries are situated in two different hemispheres they situated in two different continents both of them have a long coastline both have them have a similar historical background and they also have cultural diversities it is due to these reasons that brazil is now taken for a comparative study with india now let's come to field visit now all of you would have gone on a field trip in your lower classes you would have gone to a salt pan or you would have seen how ganesh idols are made you would have got a first hand information by visiting the salt pan you would have come across the various processes which go into the making of salt or the materials which are used in making of ganesh idols so what is a field trip in a field trip you get first hand knowledge in other words field trip is an educational procedure by which the learners obtain first hand information by observing places objects phenomena processes in their natural setting here in this lesson rahul along with his classmates and school teachers are going on a field visit from naldur in osmanabad district to alibag in raigad district they come across various changes which occur in the relief soil vegetation and human settlements as they travel from naldur to alibag next children when you go on a field trip what are the things that you take with you you need to take down your observations so you need a pen a pencil a notebook you need to carry a bag a water bottle camera binoculars a cap and a survey map as the children move from naldurg they come to the sahyadri ranges here they find that the houses are made of mud and wood we call it as dhabyachi ghari these houses are normally seen in rural regions what about houses in urban areas urban areas you find the houses are multi storied and made up of bricks cement and they are multi storied let's come to the roads in rural regions they are arranged in a straight line along the road such settlement patterns are called linear settlements in the succeeding lessons you will come across nucleated settlements wherein houses are arranged around temples or even a church or even a lake or they are scattered in rural regions when we call it as scattered settlements when the children left naldurg they found that the vegetation were 
products mainly of thorny shrubs. As they move further up to Solapur city, we find they can see extensive sugarcane fields. What do you observe then? There is a change in cropping pattern. Thorny shrubs are usually seen in regions which have low rainfall. Sugarcane is grown where irrigation facilities are available. What about pulses then? Pulses like moong, urad, tur, etc. are grown in regions which require very low rainfall. The children now come to Indapur. Here they can see the backwaters of the Ujni Dam Reservoir. Now what is a dam? A dam is used for storing water. And all of you know, India being a monsoon country receives water only for four months in a year. That is from June to September and the rest of the months we do not receive water. So it is imperative that we store water. Hence dams are used for storing water. We also use the water of the dam for generation of power, fishing, irrigation, navigation, etc. The children have now moved towards the western side of the Deccan Plateau. They see that there is a change in vegetation. When they left Naldur, they found trees like Bor, Babul, etc. But here they find deciduous varieties of trees like Anjan, Banyan, people, etc. In other words, this region gets more rainfall. These are usually the deciduous varieties which grow in regions of more than 1000 mm of rainfall. They now move towards Pune and they start climbing the Singhard Fort. Singhard Fort is a popular hill fort like Pratapgarh Fort or Raigarh Fort. All these hill forts have been built as security and to keep an eye on the surrounding. As they move down the Singhagad Fort, they can notice that the topography is rugged. Along the foothills, they can find rock debris. This is a basalt region, a type of igneous rock. As such, the entire Deccan Plateau is made up of igneous type of rocks. Further up, you can find the Kadakvasla Dam. Kadakvasla Dam is used to provide water to the surrounding regions of Pune. They now move towards the Kalyan Darwaza. We can find numerous lakes here. There are 48 such lakes in and around Singhagar. This is called Dev Taki or Sacred Lake. The water here comes from a spring and can be seen the whole year round and it provides water to the people living in the Singhagar. Along the Mumbai Pune Expressway between Khandala and Nolavala, we can see the Rajmachi Fort. It is situated towards the 
western side of the Sahyadri mountains. It has got twin fortresses and a machi is seen all around the two fortresses. To the western side of the Sahyadris, we can see waterfalls and cliffs. This region is also the source of rivers. Ulhas, a major west flowing the students along with the teacher now move to Kupoli in the Ghat section this is also called the Khandala Ghat or the Bor Ghat here they can see deciduous trees dense forests of deciduous trees like teak. This is called as Devrai, Vandrai or even sacred groves. These pristine forests have been left untouched by the local people and any sort of interference is banned. The children can now feel a cold air coming from the sea. They've now moved towards Kolaba Fort. It's also called Alibag Fort and it is situated on a wave cut platform. As it is surrounded by seawater, it is called a sea fort. You might have heard of other sea forts like Sindhudurg Janjira, etc. The sea forts were built for security of the seas. Further, now the children move towards the beach. There's an Alibag beach here, and as, and as you know, a beach is formed by deposition of sand along the sea coast. Now children, do you know the occupation of the people who live here? Yes, it is fishing and agriculture. Initially, fishing was the main occupation. But later on, agriculture also came to practice in this region. Coconut, betel nut, jackfruit as well as other spices are cultivated by the people here. Today, tourism also has become an important occupation. So children, by now, you might have understood the importance of field study. Yes, it gives you a first-hand information. You cannot have geography without field visit. It's an integral part of geography. It tells you about the interrelationship of man and his environment or the physical and cultural process. Children learn through observation. The sense of reasoning develops. Children become a part of the environment. Thank you. Thank you.